What's up? My name is Zether and welcome to today's What If video covering What If Deku Ate the Gomu Gomu no Mi. Now in case you guys are wondering, this is going to be a full series compilation of the previous parts of the story put into one movie format for your guys' enjoyment. If you guys haven't seen the full story, then definitely tune in for what's to come. And if you're a new viewer to the channel, then I'm happy to have you guys. That being said, if you do go on to enjoy today's video, remember to drop a like down below, comment down below what I can do better in more videos, and also comment down below your what if ideas for me to cover on a later basis. So with that being said, I do hope you guys go on to enjoy today's video. Hey Ross, sauce it up. Okay, so as to where I am going to be starting off, the what if is going to be on the day of Deku's birth. Now, many of you guys are probably under the impression that I'm about to give Deku black hair or that I'm about to make him be born with the devil fruit powers, but no, he's going to be developing it at the age of four years old, just like another kid, just like other kids would with quirks. However, it's not going to be due to the fact that he has a quirk because yes, boys, he is going to be Luffy's reincarnation, meaning he's going to be unlocking the power just a little later on when his body can basically handle it. That being said though, guys, I am going to be starting off the story on the day that Bakugo and Deku were basically walking across the bridge when they were little kids. And many of you guys are probably going to be like, why? But you're about to find out. So, as I had already stated, Deku and Bakugo would have basically had the same exact childhood as they do in canon up to this point, and Bakugo would be going forward, marching with this little flag in his hand as he's like, forward, forward, you know, he would just be leading the group, everybody would be following Bakugo, and he'd be throwing little explosions from his hands as everybody's like, whoa, Bakugo, you're so cool. Immediately, Deku would be like, yeah, Kachan, you're so awesome. Kachan would then basically proceed to fall off the bridge, however, before he can, Deku Deku's protective instinct of just wanting to save people would hit, and this is when Deku would first get the powers of the Devil Fruit to activate. However, many people in this version are going to be thinking it's a quirk. As Deku would use the abilities of the Gum Gum Fruit, he would basically stretch, grab Bakugo before his body could even touch the water, and he would bring him back up as everybody's just like, Whoa! Izuku, your quirk! It's amazing! Deku would immediately look at them and he's like, You're right! as it's at this point that he would basically just see look at his hands as he just starts running home and as Deku runs off Bakugo would say I didn't need your saving as he would yell that at Deku at the top of his lungs the kids would then start talking about how awesome Deku's quirk is and that would actually rub Bakugo the wrong way however Deku would then make it to the quirk doctor where they would tell him that there's no signs that he should have a quirk however he does so they're just going to be naming it elasticity or whatever and Deku would be just fine with that seeing as it seems like a pretty basic line quirk right so i'm not really going to give too many details onto that they will tell him to just watch out for the quirk and if anything bad happens to make sure to come to the quirk doctor in case he stretches out and can't go back to his normal form that being said, after this, Deku would go to school the very next day, being preschool, I believe, and this is when a bunch of kids would start idolizing Deku for his quirk. People would start telling him that his quirk is awesome, and the teachers would tell him that he could definitely make a great hero with that. As Baku would walk up to Deku, he would say, yeah, he might be awesome in his own little way, but my quirk will always be better. As this is when the teacher would say, now, now, Bakugo, no need to be rude. And Bakugo, from this point forward, would basically continue this little cycle of trying to basically consistently drag Deku down so that he doesn't see the full potential of his quirk. See, if Bakugo lets Deku get full of himself, he might start training and that poses a threat to his superiority complex. And so, Bakugo starts telling Deku things to make sure that he doesn't get better than him. And therefore, Deku, after months and months and months of this, would finally start to believe Bakugo. And, well, Deku would start getting a little sadder and go more towards his original personality in canon, of basically staying a little bit more on the silent side, being shy and all that stuff. And... Well, Deku would grow up almost as usual, however, one major change to the story that I felt like adding for no real apparent reason, I could have probably done this without this, but I figured that I wanted to add a little bit of a spice to the story. So, 
Deku's father is actually going to be around in this version of events, and this is when Deku would continue growing up with his normal stuff, right? Deku and his father are going to have a pretty decent bond together, and Deku will actually be loving his father quite a lot in this version because Hisashi doesn't end up working the job that he has in canon, which is overseas. Instead, he works pretty he works in a company that's pretty close by, so he's always around with his family. And Hisashi in this version is just going to be a great father overall. However, this one we're going to be having a little bit of a time skip to the day where Deku was 9 years old and he would have just gone home from school. This is when Deku would begin to tell his father about how Bakugo bullied him yet again and this is when Hisashi would say not to worry about it, they'll go out to the movies and afterwards, Deku can forget all about that. Deku would smile at his father as he would say, yeah, bet, as this is when he would look at him and they would basically start heading their way to the movie theater. They would go over as they would watch Shang Ch Chang Chi, I don't know what that new movie's called, bro, but that new Marvel movie, right? They would watch the new Marvel movie, and this is when Deku would be pretty hype. You know, obviously they wouldn't actually watch it, but before the movie starts, Deku would have actually seen something very interesting. Deku would have been in the seat with his father, as this is when randomly a sponsor would come up. As boys, this is when I will now be introducing the sponsor of today's video by the name of Fandom. Now, they are an anime company which basically makes a lot of anime merch. Like, boys, you can see this. We got My Hero, Haikuyu, we got Attack on Titan, One Piece. We have so many selections, and what you guys do see on screen is not the only color waves that they have. They have multiple colors of different designs. If you were to maybe want a single hoodie, and it, let's say it's a pink, you don't want it in pink, well, you can change the color, make it white, make it pink, make it brown. They have a variety of selections on their shop, and honestly, it's pretty dope. I definitely am going to be having a cop myself. Let me show you guys. Oh my god, this is saucy. Tell me you don't want... Oh my god. Tell me you wouldn't cop this for yourself. There is no way you wouldn't cop this. Like, look at this. Boys, come on. You're missing out if you don't cop any of this fire merch. You have to be literally dumb to not take off the offer and not only are they offering you guys you know what well, good prices seeing as you know most other people be they'd be overpricing bro the other day i went to the store and they tried to sell me a hoodie for a hundred bucks like bro i get it I, I got a little bit of money but i'm not rich yo hold on now this hoodie's gonna fire now nah, but anyways okay this is a sponsor not me looking at the shop but look Bottom line, store is dope. It would mean a whole lot to me if you guys were to at least go down below, click on the link down below in the description, and basically, you know, check out the stuff. If you like anything, you can definitely use my code, which will be down in the description of Zether, which will be, you know, down below. You guys can just copy and paste it, and it will give you guys 5% off. Off of this merch that is already, most of it, already 50% off, meaning you guys will be getting a discount of 55%. So, come on now. What are you guys waiting for? Go shop on Fan them now and uh, that's basically it for today's sponsor now back to the video okay so getting back into the story Deku would basically finish up the movie and afterwards Deku and Asashi would be having a bag of popcorn right the usual the normal stuff that people do when they go to the movies right they would of course take an alleyway because they ended up parking a little far because the movie theater was pretty packed and everybody wanted to watch the new movie so this is when they would take a path towards the alleyway and this is when they would proceed to get mugged more specifically Hisashi would and Hisashi would try to to fight back not being the type of person to just let it happen he would try to use his fire quirk but the man would shoot him right in the right in the left side of his lung as Hisashi would fall onto the ground and the man would grab Hisashi's wallet as he would run off this is when Deku would fall to his knees as he's like dad dad are you okay this is when Asashi would just look up at Deku as this is when Asashi would start coughing out blood as he would have a smile on his face a big smile and he would then look at his son as he tells him look at me look at me Deku or no look at me Zuku as Deku would look at him this is when he would tell him promise me something as he would cough out some blood Deku would say anything anything at all what as Hisashi would say promise me you'll smile more often and promise me you won't let people push you around. Promise me to be the great man that I know you can become. As he would say, I might not be around there to keep telling you this for the next couple of years. I don't think I'm going to make it, Deku. This is when Izuku would start crying and would just say, Dad, no, don't don't talk like that. We'll get you help. You're going to make it out of here. But Asashi would just close his eyes as he just says, promise me. 
and Deku would scream to the heavens as he's like, no! This is when immediately Deku would just see his dad close his eyes and his hand would fall to the ground. As Deku, after hearing those words, would stand up as he would proceed to basically look down at the ground his pupils would basically have dilated and this is when Deku would make his fist grow into a giant shape as Deku would just look towards the direction of the man as he just finished running away about three blocks. Deku would sprint. He would proceed to haul ass over there and this is when Deku would blitz at the man as he would punch him one good solid time breaking the man's ribs as he would throw him into another alleyway and the gun would have gotten shot out of the man's head as out of the man's hand sorry as Deku would proceed to pretty much start beating the man senseless he would start folding the man like an omelet and go so far that he actually almost kills the man however he would briefly be able to snap out of it and this is when for the next couple of months Deku would pretty much try his hardest to try to uphold his father's wishes but it would be difficult. Imagine losing your father and then being told that you he wants you to smile. That sounds like one of the hardest things you would ever have to have to do. And so Deku would struggle with it for the next couple of months. Bakugo would kind of just chill out with calling Deku out, and Deku would just have a pretty tough time coming to terms with what had happened that day. Until one day when Deku gets home and throws his stuff to the side, Deku would just be in his room watching a classic Zether video. In case you haven't seen what if Zether was a Naruto, go watch it because it's beautiful. And with that being said, Deku would basically just be like, hey mom, what's up? As Inko would walk inside the room, she would say, hey, uh, aren't you gonna eat some dinner? Deku would look at Inko as he would say, nah, not really feeling it. As Inko would look at Deku, she would sit down and say, look, I know how hard it's been losing your father, but please promise me one thing. Deku would say, what? To move forward? To smile? How can I, mom? I lost my dad. How do you expect me to do this? Inko would then look at Deku as she would say, I'm not expecting you to be smiling about things, but your father would have never li liked to see you this way, not eating, malnourished. This is not at all what your father asked of you. Deku would say, well, what is what he asked of me? This one, Inko would come over to Deku and she would start crying herself as they would both go into each other and embrace. Deku would say, I I'm lost, mom. I, I don't know what to do. What do I do, mom? I tell me what to do i have no idea i wake up every day not knowing if it'll be my last as deku would look at her and inko would then say don't think like that things happen in life you never know if your last day is going to be tomorrow maybe 10 seconds from now and that's why we got to live our life to the fullest that's what your father always did and that's why i loved him this is when Inko would take out a picture book as she would begin to tell Deku stories about her, his father as Deku would just hear these and she would tell him stories about how, De how her father long ago wanted to become a pirate. And Deku hearing this would smile as he would say, sounds like some hell of a dream. As Inko would say, oh it was. He always searched for this thing by the name of one, the One Piece. As Deku would hear that and he would then say, yeah. Sounds like a great goal. He would say, I wish my father could have accomplished it. This is when Inko would say, it's not about accomplishing the goal. It's about the trip and the experience that it takes you on. As Deku would hear this, he would be like, yeah, maybe you're right. As Inko would pretty much grab a hat that she has behind her. And she would say, this used to be your father's when he was about your age. He used to always wear it and smile all the time. I told you about how me and your father have been dating since high school, right? And... And she said about your age, meaning he wasn't exactly his age, but you know, around that age group, I guess you could say. As Deku would say, yeah, he used to tell me about it all the time. Dad always tried to give it to me, but I never really wanted it. I mean, look at the hat. As Inko would start chuckling, she would say, yeah, but your dad did write in his will that if anything was to ever happen to him, he would want you to keep this. As Deku would take hold of the hat, he would then put it on and crack a big, bright smile. As this is when Deku would finally begin his transformation into more of a Deku, I mean of a Luffy personality, upbeat, smiling, not ever letting anybody just throw him around, having more of a will, having an iron will, having a personality that's more infectious. He's not going to sit there and be a a b-i-t-c-h boy anymore because you know he's not built like that and in case some of you guys are wondering why are you abbreviating bro like what's going on simply put i don't want a yellow check on the video that being said 
This is when Deku would go to school, and for the next couple of weeks, kid would make, kids would make fun of Deku, especially Bakugo, calling Deku out for wearing an ugly hat, and Deku would always just smile. He would never fight back, never say anything. He would always just crack a smile and tell Bakugo that, well, it's just his opinion. Deku would always just be upbeat from that day forward. And it would honestly rub Bakugo the wrong way because Bakugo lived for seeing Deku down. But now that Deku was always smiling, he just doesn't know anymore. And with that being said, this is when they would continue to just basically go on with their days, right? They would just be chilling, you know what I'm saying? They would just be vibing. And this is when we're going to be having a little bit of a brief time skip. Seeing as during this time, of course, our boy Deku is going to be training, right? And, you know, he's going to be doing that stuff. And during the time of that little time skip, Bakugo about let's say four months into Deku starting where, to wear the hat, tried to bully Deku at one point and even take the hat from him. But Deku proceeded to say, oh nah, bro, this my dad's hat. You, you not finna touch this. As he would hit him with the gum gum gatling and Bakugo, he got folded like an omelet. He's not messing with Deku anymore. It's not gonna happen, like at all. Like not happening, not one bit. Nope, 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 not at all. And with that being said, Deku would then basically proceed to continue to train for the next couple of years, honing his stretchy quote-unquote quirk, but it's not a quirk, it's the devil fruit powers. And with that being said, this is when I'm going to be skipping over to the day where Deku walks into the classroom on the day of the sludge villain. He would sit down, lie his head down, and just kind of pass out since he's kind of tired from the night before. This is when out of nowhere the teacher would walk inside and start doing his I know you all want to be hero shtick. Everybody would get excited. Bakugo would be like, don't compare me to these losers, teach. And Deku would just be at the back, like, just be quiet, bro. Like, you're annoying. And it's at this point that Deku would kind of just finish class. Bakugo wouldn't really mess with him. And he would then take the shortcut because it's his mother's birthday on this particular day. This is when Deku would start walking by as this is when the sludge villain would jump onto Deku as he's just like, give me your body, kid. And this this is when Deku would immediately start losing his breath as Deku just starts freaking out a bit but then remembers oh yeah he has a quirk as Deku not a quirk but a devil fruit as Deku would pretty much stretch his head out out of the sludge villain he'd be like <gasps> as he breathed and it says ah much better this is when the sludge villain would be like what the as Deku just basically turns himself into a giant balloon and gets like fatter as the sludge villain expands and gets thrown everywhere along the walls this is when All Might would appear and Deku would meet his idol as he freaks out and is just like, All Might, you're, you're the All Might. He would freak out, get an autograph, and when All Might would ask Deku what happened, Deku would explain that he has a stretchy quirk. As he would use it once again, All Might would just be extremely shocked and be like, this kid, he has so much finesse and he was already able to take down a villain, which I even struggled with. As All Might would look at Deku, he would then consider All, uh, Deku to be one of the holders for, you know, one for all. And he would bottle up the sludge villain as he would pretty much dip. That being said, All Might would have ended up getting Deku's number, and he would have ended up asking Deku if he wanted to train with him. So for the first month of Deku's training during the 10 months, Deku would have ended up training with All Might. And as for those of you who are like, yo, dude, what did Inko and Deku do for her birthday? Deku got her some golden earrings and took her out to eat, some slight, sh some slight stuff, and well, after that, Deku just proceeded to start training with All Might for a month. After the training, All Might would have just started l growing onto De like. Deku would have started growing onto All Might, and All Might would have a clear liking for Deku. However, All Might wouldn't really do, in, do too much about it, and he just really likes Deku as a whole. He just likes Deku, and he wants Deku to take one for all, but Deku just refused it, saying he doesn't really need it. Why doesn't somebody else who's more on the weaker side take it? And that leads to All Might actually thinking about that, meaning he's going to be finding another quirkless kid in about another set two months who is actually on the on the younger side of the spectrum. Like, let's say he's about four years younger and he has a heroic heart similar to what Deku would be in canon and All Might ends up training him as that's basically who the successor of One For All is going to be. I don't want to give it to Mirio because 2 OP. Deku wouldn't be able to beat him if he got One For All. And I just want Deku to be the number one hero in the future. So it's like, yeah, Mirio, sorry about that, bro. But you're not getting One For All. Not, not at all. As, yeah, this one Deku would train for the next 
nine months by himself actually watching tons of anime for ideas of how he can use his little stretchy power. He would of course have idols such as Mr. Fantastic from the Fantastic Four, w Luffy from One Piece, as that's where he actually developed the power of the of the Gum Gum Gatling. Seeing as uh, it's not technically Luffy, but it's somebody who is similar to Luffy in an anime that Deku likes to watch. And that's where Deku gets a lot of his ideas for the way that he uses his powers. That being said, Deku during the nine months would also train in a lot of martial arts and this is when I will now be covering the entrance exam. The entrance exam is going to be going as many of you guys can probably expect. Deku would of course arrive and seeing as you know he's not the same person that he is in canon, he wouldn't exactly end up meeting Araka or tripping or anything. So when he goes inside, he kind of just takes the test and he waits outside patiently for the robot portion seeing as Deku is not about to rush nobody you know he's chilling he's vibing and so Deku just kind of goes outside you know he chills out he's pretty mellow he's vibing right and you know they're waiting for the for the robots to get called and all that stuff but Deku would get kind of tired and literally just jump over the gate he would stretch his leg out so far that he basically goes over the gate and just goes into his arm as he stretches back into it and just goes over the bill over the uh gate as he would just start destroying robots left and right and the teachers wouldn't even notice this but Deku would already be going on a rampage and this is when the kids would be like that's not fair after about 20 seconds but this is when um once it called the teachers would notice and they would be like yeah how about we give this kid some extra time as present mike is like what well, you all should have gone like do you think we wait for some some bell to start so that we can finally start doing our jobs no we don't wait go 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 as he would basically finally start opening up the gate and this is when everybody would rush inside as they all start destroying robots left and right. Gum Gum Gatlings are being thrown everywhere. Deku would throw giant punches. He would stretch out and cover entire robots and crush them inside of his stretchy figure. And he would even turn himself into a giant buff man of the stature of All Might. Seeing as Deku can stretch himself, he can definitely stretch himself into the shape that he wants. And in case you guys are wondering what physique Deku has, Deku has whatever physique he wants. Because the man can pretty much make himself look like whatever he wants being stretchy technically has more powers than just the ones that luffy uses and seeing as he is in the quirk world i am going to be also taking a couple of influences from other stuff so yeah it's going to be luffy's reincarnation with extra steps right that's why i didn't give him hockey because if i gave him this plus all of luffy's powers it would be not okay like hockey is on another level it's not healthy it is not healthy but with that being said, Deku would obliterate the robots, to put it lightly. And when the zero pointer comes around, Deku is just like, nope. But he does actually end up saving Araka because at this point, Deku is pretty powerful with his quirk, don't get me wrong. But, uh, you know, if he can avoid a zero pointer, he's gonna avoid the zero pointer. So, Deku would do just that. Psyche he wouldn't avoid it. He would create a giant fist and stretch himself out to be a giant. Just kidding, he doesn't do all that. But seriously, he creates a giant fist in his hand and he starts spinning it around as if a cowboy was spinning around a little bit of a uh, of a rope and this is when he basically threw his arm as his arm punched straight through the the zero pointers chest and it fell down to the ground and afterwards Deku ran home as for the next three days Deku was just waiting patiently for himself to get the letter eating a whole lot of food and basically got his acceptance he would get his stuff together and Inka would drop him off for his very first day Deku would walk inside seeing Bakugo talking to Ida just arguing as Deku was like ah. and Uraraka would then walk up behind Deku she's like hey you're the boy with the green hair as Deku's like hey and he's wearing his little Luffy hat even though he's wearing the uniform and she's like why do you always wear the hat Deku would basically just say that he really likes it as it's at this point that Uraraka would not question it any further Aizawa would end up uh, uh, um pretty much waking up as we would all expect and Deku would just be like all right as they all go outside and of course they end up taking the quirk exam or the quirk apprehension test because well Aizawa wants to see how all of them do and I bet you can all guess how good Deku's scores were because I mean the man has a quirk that are uh, no not a quirk but a uh, gum gum a devil fruit power that's very versatile so when it comes to the normal things that they do in this version of events Deku 
basically aces it. The 50 meter dash, Deku quite literally stretches his legs really long and just sprints across. He hauls ass. As for the grip strength test, he makes his hand a little bigger and crushes it. The standing long jump, he jumps all over it by making himself kind of like a slingy. And as for the repeated side steps, he does something similar. As for the ball throw, he pretty much spins his arm so fast and throws it about 4,000 meters. And for the three remaining tests, Deku just gets pretty good scores for the push-ups, sit-ups, and, you know, the little plank or whatever it is that, you know, you would expect Deku to do. And afterwards, people would just be shocked at Deku. Uraraka would walk up to Deku and she's like, dude, how did you do this? Deku pretty much proceeded to be like, well, if you want to find out, then make sure you go to part two. And this is where we're going to be picking off the story. So Deku would basically look at Uraraka as he's smiling and Uraraka would be like, what? Deku would then be like, huh? What, what What happened? And this is when Uraraka would say, you told me something about a part two. Deku would think inside of his head, did I just break the fourth wall? And this is when Zether would pop up in his mind. So he'd be like, you sure did, buddy. As he would say, come on now, now forget all about this. As Deku would forget all about that Uraraka, that all about that interaction, so would Uraraka and the story would continue. Deku would look at her as he would smile and say, oh, you want to find out what my quirk is? As Uraraka would be like, I guess. As it's at this point that Deku would be like, oh well don't worry about it it's really not that complicated and my quirk is called elasticity it basically gives me the abilities of rubber and i can pretty much do whatever i want it gives me the abilities of you know being really stretchy and all that stuff and uraka's like oh so you're like that guy from mr fantastic or or luffy as deki would say gomu gomu no me as it's at this point that uraka would be like oh my god you sound just like him as she would look at deku she would then be like well, that's awesome, as in this version, Luffy doesn't wear the straw hat, and Luffy isn't quite the same character that he is in the in the, in the the actual story, because, you know, anime exists, but it's not the exact same anime world that we all know and love. That being said, this is when Deku would basically, after explaining everything, he would smile towards Uraraka, as he would say, oh, sorry, uh, lost track of time, I gotta go. This one he would say, I gotta make sure that I'm ready for the next day at the Heroes vs. Villains event, as Uraraka would be like, huh? Deku would say, what as he would just be like all right i gotta go as he would leave and immediately he would get home and his mother would have a full four course meal set up for him as deku would be like mom i love you this is when inka would look at him and she would say i know as she would proceed to basically you know she she'd hook the boy up you know she'd bless his life immediately deku would look at her as he would say mom I I'm so thankful you're my mom as Inko would be like come on now just just eat your food as he would and afterwards Deku would quite literally pass out on the ground as Inko would pick that boy up and she would drag Deku over to the bed as it to this point that Deku would wake up the very next day actually pretty late it'd be about 12 in the day as Deku would then get dropped dropped off at school by Inko they both passed out pretty late because you know they woke up in the middle of the night and they kind of just talked about things, right? So Deku and Inko both pretty much ended up staying up until 12. And so Deku got to school late. So when he walked in the classroom, Aizawa was just like, you're late. As he would say, why would you even bother showing up if you're going to be this late? Deku would hold the back of his head and she's like, uh -huh, yeah. As it's at this point that Aizawa would say, well, sit down. We're almost to the end of the day. Three hours would go by and this is when finally they would have their heroes versus villain stuff. All Might would walk inside the classroom as he would say, I am here to tell you guys about the sponsor. Now, this is when I will now be telling you guys about my beautiful sponsor, okay? And other me's basically going to be taking it away. All right, all right, so I guess now I'm gonna finally get the chance to tell you guys about the crispy sponsor of today's video. And yes, boys, they sell My Hero Academia merch. Have you guys ever been wanting to buy yourself some My Hero merch, whether it be the Deku jacket, whether it just be your favorite characters on a hoodie, maybe a jean jacket, or, you know, some cool designs. If you're female, they have stuff for you. They have, you know, the perfect presents and gifts for your loved ones in case their birthday's coming up, or, you know, any anime lovers. Everything here is at a reasonable price and from what i've seen at real stores like brick and mortar stores they be overcharging bro but this website 
like, bro, you're not a, you're not about to get a better deal than this. Half of their stuff is most of the time a big percentage off. You know, they have really cool jackets. They have Hawks, Bakugo shirts. They have little, you know, the school outfits and females. They have cool My Hero Academia shirts. And in case you don't like the color that these things come in, you can basically change the color and adjust it to your own preferences. In terms of what I think is pretty drippy, I would definitely have to go with the jean jacket. I mean, boys, just look at this thing. It is so incredibly fire. Like, look at all of these options. Look, oh my God, I can't believe it. They made the cami jacket. That's heat. That's heat right there. If I was to cop one of the hoodies, I'd probably get this one. It's pretty fire. And yeah, boys, if you guys have ever wanted to get your favorite characters on a hoodie or anything like that in general, I would definitely recommend these guys. They're very safe. They're trusted. I promise you guys will get your items shipped to you in less than a week. And uh, yeah, that's basically been it for today's sponsor. I hope you guys go on to click the link and at least check out, you know, the store. Maybe you see something, maybe you won't. But, you know, if you check it out, it'll definitely help out the channel. With that being said, though, guys, I I love you guys thank you for hearing me out and back to the video okay now after you guys are done hearing about the sponsor i will now be getting back into the story so as i was saying deku would pretty much go through class all my would bust in and after telling you guys about my beautiful sponsor he would basically proceed to well essentially just go through and tell the rest of the class what they are going to be doing today this one all my would begin to explain the usual casual stuff that he always does talking about some yada 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 you guys know what he's about to say right he's like oh yeah you know it, you know to be a hero you gotta have a good outfit and he they would all get suited up and the little my hero song would pop up in the background as you know this is when everybody would come out looking very saucy and deku would be wearing literally the same outfit that he's wearing in the thumbnail it'd be green he'd be wearing a little green shirt and this is when bakugo would immediately see deku as he would start laughing and start making fun of deku immediately deku would see this and just start laughing himself as he would then stretch his hand over to bakugo punching him right in the face as Baku goes like hey what was that for you do that again and I'll kill you as Deku would start chuckling himself and this is when Deku would say you'd have to catch me first as he'd pretty much run away and all my would say now now settle down as he would say I'm about to start drawing the lots this is when he would draw out all the people and you know it would basically be the same teams that we all know and of course love every you know same team that we usually get such as you know little araka and deku action we would even get the bakugo and ida action right they would both look at each other deku would then begin to explain to araka his little relationship that he has with bakugo and araka would be like uh, this is a little weird. As Deku would say, yeah, a little sum sum, but you know, that's just how he is. As Uraka would say, well, I guess it's a battle between fated rivals. As this is when Deku would start chuckling and they would both just kind of look at each other as they're smiling a little bit. They would both pretty much proceed to just start chilling as Deku would say, all right, look, so here's the plan. We're just going to run in there and we're just going to take them out. As Uraka's like, what kind of plan is that? Deku would say, it's the only plan we need. As he starts rushing in there, as he can already hear Bakugo on his Deku running right through the hallway with his explosions. Deku would turn the corner as Bakugo would throw a full power explosion. Deku would get big so and to the size of fat gum and tank the explosion as Bakugo's like, you think you're gonna make a fool out of me, Deku? As he would basically rush at Deku's direction, he would then throw a big giant explosion. Deku would get flung backwards, but this is when Deku would use his rubbery nature to ricochet off the wall as he would hit Bakugo square in the jaw and then he would land as Deku would look down at the ground as he just finished watching as um let's see he just finished watching one of luffy's moves the little gum gum gatling that he used against that tiger guy it's like a little leopard it's like a yellow animal i never honestly have seen one piece after like chapter 50 i mean uh not chapter 50 but episode like 60 or 70 so i'm really not that far into it but you know i'm around the time where they get swallowed up by a whale and it's pretty lame so i kind of stopped watching one piece but i know it gets lit so i'm probably gonna read the manga and catch up and maybe do a couple more one piece what if such as what 
if Deku was Zoro's reincarnation? Because I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys would like to see that. Maybe I would even do a Sanji reincarnation. Or maybe I might even do Usopp. Because I'm pretty sure that, Us you know, Usopp's a little weird right now. But, you know, there's, there's some hope for Usopp to become a badass later on. With that being said, basically, Deku would get into a fight with Bakugo. As Bakugo would pretty much have to fight an entirely uphill battle. He would try his best to defeat Deku. But just like it always goes, Deku would end up getting the upper hand hand in defeating Bakugo. This is when Deku would turn the corner as Uraraka would have barely been arriving and Deku would give her a big giant cheesy smile. He would tell her if she's ready as Uraraka would say did you already beat him? As Deku would say sure did. This one he would crack a little smile and Uraraka would be like whoa that's impressive. Deku would then say a little bit as Deku would then pretty much proceed to look at Uraraka and say, well, shall we? As Uraraka would say, yeah, of course. They would go inside and Uraraka would pretty much, Deku would grab Uraraka by the legs as he would pretty much throw her at Ida. And she would get there so fast that she would be able to touch Ida and Ida would start floating on the ground, leading to Uraraka going to the bomb and touching it, meaning that they secured the bag or in this case, the bomb. As it's at this point that afterwards, they would pretty much just start, you know, they, they'd start vibing. You know, the class would tell them that Deku was so impressive. Bakugo would be pretty much unconscious in recovery girl's office. And this version of Bakugo is a lot more humble than the one that we have in the original. Because, you know, the man's been getting folded like an omelet for years. So it's like, you know, once you get beat up that many times, you kind of got to humble yourself. You know what I mean? Like... If you're gonna get folded like that, you better stop it with that big, big, you know, chihuahua attitude, if you know what I mean. Afterwards, this is when the rest of the people would go, and after class, Deku and Uraraka would pretty much walk home. Deku would walk Uraraka home, and Uraraka would be so unsure of how she feels towards Deku. She likes him, but as a friend, but at the same time, she has some sort of attraction to him that's a little different than if it was just a friend. She still doesn't know how she feels about him, but Deku just goes home, eats some food, and and this is when we will now have about one week of normal schooling. As Deku and Uraraka, they'd be in school, nothing really insane would happen. Just the usual, usual, you know, same old, same old classes, heroes versus uh, heroes training and like fighting and combat and all that stuff. But this one, Aizawa, during the third day, would explain to them all that they're going to be going to, to the USJ and he would pretty much have their family sign petitions. Deku's mom would, of course, do this as they would all get on the bus and this is when they would arrive to the USJ as wow i'm already like let's say i'm like 10 minutes into the video and i'm pretty far into the story already it's been like a total of let's say 35 minutes that i've done the story of what if deku was luffy's reincarnation and i'm already this far into it i actually really like the pacing to this what if there's no extra steps i'm not skipping through things i'm not adding too many words it feels fluent it feels good honestly i'm having a pretty i'm pretty i'm having a pretty good time doing this what if this uh is when i'm going to be giving you guys a little bit of a sneak peek the next what if that i'm going to be dropping after this is going to be what if deku was frieza's reincarnation I don't know how you guys feel about that, but trust me, boys, Deku is going to be so overpowered straight from birth because we all know that Frieza, he wasn't trained to have the power that he has in the, in the Namek saga. He was quite literally born with it, lucky bastard, but yeah. That being said, let's go back into the story. Deku and everybody else would arrive as 13 would pretty much tell them that, you know, the, their powers can be dangerous, but to make sure that they use them for good as everybody's just nodding. They're like, yeah, 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 bro. Like we've been through this before. This isn't our first time. And 13 would just be like, yeah, all right, guys. As you know, they're all vibing. They're chilling. They're having a pretty good time. Nothing's really going on until they finally go inside and Kurogiri would teleport before them. This is when Deku would say, woo! as he would jump at Kurogiri and say let's start he would immediately punch Kurogiri's metal part as that was from pure luck he made his fist bigger and he was like whoa these villains feel real as he would have Kurogiri on the ground Shigaraki and the rest of the squad wouldn't have even gotten teleported in yet because in this version I'm going to be going with the notion that the heroes versus villains stuff actually not nah, Shigaraki and all of them were already there and Kurogiri was about to teleport them all to their different locations right this is when Deku would be like whoa this is awesome as immediately Aizawa would rush at the gate and he would pretty much tell Sato to bust it down along with Kirishima. As the both of them would, this is when immediately Deku would pretty much be like, what's going on? As everybody in class 1A would run out of there, Deku would be like, 
all right as he would pretty much step outside of the usj and he would still be holding kurogiri because he's like all right where do i put him in jail kurogiri would be getting gripped pretty hard by deku because deku is on some strong stuff you know he's not on that weak sauce right so deku is holding kurogiri and kurogiri is like let me go you hero as deku would say y what bro you're taking the acting too far like it, I, I get it you know you're going into your role you know you're pretty professional with it bro but i'm gonna need you to chill out as kura gear is like damn you you brat immediately deku would say whoa don't talk to me like that as you know kura gear would be like all right and this is when you know aizawa would pretty much disable kura Giri's teleportation quirk as a bunch of heroes would arrive and this is when they would pretty much take out everyone in the usj including shigaraki yeah, I'm not like the other what if YouTubers that like to have Shigaraki get past this. No, yeah, Shigaraki's getting captured. Like, from the way that I made everything go, Shigaraki is not going to get away whatsoever. There is zero hope and chance for Shigaraki to get away. So with that being said, he would pretty much end up getting captured. And well, now, after this, they would all pretty much just be on some vibe and stuff they would have one more week of normal school seeing as the usj didn't go viral nobody got hurt no teachers got hurt they ended up folding the villains and shigaraki seeing as he didn't even have kuragiri with him he did pretty well all my had to fight the no move course that took a lot of stamina out of him but nevertheless it was way better than it was in canon and with that being said this is when i will now be jumping into when aizawa would tell them about the ua sports festival Aizawa would look at his classes, he would say, all right, class, as you guys know, every year we have the UA Sports Festival, and this year it just so happens that we're going to be having it next week. Everybody would get pumped, or Rock would be like, I'm excited, are you excited? And you know, of course, they would have that little interaction. In terms of the people who came out to stalk them and be like, all right, let's count the competition, that wouldn't happen, because the USJ never went public, none of that ever got out to the media, so it was all normal, and seeing as it never got out to the media, there was no press none of that stuff and so the us ua sports festival is pretty much all we have to look forward to so this is when we will now be getting into the ua sports festival this is so we're basically going to be picking off our story right where we had left off essentially deku had gone over to give the grand speech of the ua school festival and well the crowd seemed to eat it all up now in specific to what exactly it was that he said not gonna lie to you guys i'm very bad at giving speeches so i'm kind of just gonna say that deku said something awesome the people ate it up and now deku is like the chosen favorite to win the school festival everybody's pumped up deku said something along the lines of everybody you know give it your best shot and even the contestants were a little hyped so all the people from the general studies all class 1b's members are gonna put in just a little bit more effort that being said this is when the first event would be announced that being the race and this is when everybody would basically get to their racing lineups as they would all get on their little they would all put on their little p uniforms and this is when they would all go outside people would immediately start yelling daku daku you know at the top of their lungs and deku would just be smiling as he's like whoa didn't know this many people were gonna like me as immediately you would see bakugo come in out of nowhere being like yeah nerd of course they were gonna light you after you did that little speech as deku would look at him and say jeez bakugo always so moody you as this is when deku would basically get in the spot of line right now this is when midnight would basically announce the beginning of the race as deku would proceed to well essentially grow all the way to the top because he knew Todoroki he knew Todoroki was about to do something along the lines of what he ended up doing so what Deku did was he basically jumped up into the air and he pretty much grabbed onto the top of the stadium as this is when Todoroki would have froze everything and Deku just decided huh I can see the other side of the stadium from all the way over here. He would pretty much stretch his arm all the way to the other side and then let go of the one that he the one that he had previously as he would pretty much slingshot straight to the finish line having to deal with zero problems, zero difficulties and 
they ended up winning. That being said, this is when, no, I said they, but no, Deku ended up winning. And as for the rest of the people, they ended up getting their canon counterpart scores. Uh, I would say that, yeah, they ended up, yeah, they ended up getting exactly the scores that you would imagine that they would get. That being said, this is when then after they would have some events for the people who didn't get, you know, too far. And well, afterwards, the cavalry battle would be announced. Deku would be told that he needs to get about three more partners and immediately Deku would know in like on site who he is who it is that he's gonna choose he would look towards Uraraka's direction as Uraraka would smile and Deku would say all right now I only need two more members this is when he would pretty much proceed to walk over towards Todoroki's direction as Todoroki would see Deku he would have an angry face and he would immediately tell Deku that he's not interested in being in a team with someone like him as Deku would say ah all right then I, I guess as he would pretty much proceed go to Tokiyami, Tokiyami would be like, sure, I'll be delighted to work with you, and Deku would then basically proceed to have Mei Hatsume come up to him on some, yup, I want that glory, give me that attention, run it up right now, and Deku would, well, of course, proceed to take her as his teammate, as it's at this point that they would get ready into the cavalry battle, you know, um, what's it called, they would, they would pretty much have the same setup that they have in canon, Tokiyami's there, Araka's there, you know, everybody in canon's there, and Deku's little strategy is basically to turn himself into a human balloon like he's basically going to turn himself into a circle and wrap around everybody like a ball he's even going to make little seating areas that are perfectly fitted to you know their bodies and he basically just started getting sh flinged around like a freaking soccer ball right the man was pretty much getting ricocheted back and forward and Deku was getting pretty injured from this I'm not gonna lie but it's like how else do you keep a one one million point headband yeah you keep it by defending it so that's pretty much what Deku did by the end of the cavalry battle Deku was pretty beaten up however they ended up keeping their one million point headband and so Deku had about 10 minutes to rest seeing as now people from other classes were going to be starting their own little stuff the third years were going to be having their own little events and they would have some time to basically recuperate themselves and well get back in line right Deku would be in his own section just chilling straight vibing as Todoroki would walk inside of the room and tell him that if he believes that he's gonna win just because he got easy on that cavalry battle then he has something else coming because you know what happened when rubber touches ice Deku would look at Todoroki as he would say I don't know what as Todoroki would smirk he would say it breaks as it's at this point that Todoroki would look at Deku with the menacing aura as Deku would just say all right well I mean good luck as he would smile and just pat him on the back Todoroki would get pretty angry by this because you know he wanted to intimidate Deku but it seems like the only thing he did was get Deku fired up so afterwards Deku pretty much just proceeds to stay in the room or Raka would come in later on after taking her embarrassing oh wait no actually no not not really she'd come in pretty happy and excited and this is when Deku would look at her as he would say, Have you heard about the sponsor of today's video? As Uraraka would say, What sponsor? As Deku would look at her and say, Our beautiful sponsor, of course, at Fandom, they are bringing to you guys the best anime merch apparel on the market. They offer Dragon Ball Super, Naruto merch, One Piece. They offer Tokyo Revengers, The Seven Deadly Sins, One Punch Man, Fairy Tale, any merch you guys could possibly want. They offer, and they offer variety varieties of selections for the styles that you guys may have they offer shorts hoodies jean jackets backpacks hats they offer everything boys so it's like you know you kind of want to cop yourself some of this fire merch right they got black clover dr store dr stone inu yasha death note and if you guys have ever won oh wow that's actually kind of fire hold on now give me a second um hold on no we're gonna take a quick okay that is fire if you guys have ever wanted some black clover merch don't look any further because this is straight fire like look at this stuff this is pretty heat okay 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 i'm getting i'm getting off topic when it comes down to the sponsorship right bottom line they have pretty dope merch you know they have genshin impact the promise neverland you guys from what you guys can't see up screen you guys can see that they have multiple variations of merch for you guys to choose from so it doesn't really matter what it is you're looking for i promise you guys you will be finding merch for whatever it is you need and with that being said that is basically going to be it for today's sponsor i hope you guys uh you know been liking the video so far and with that being said we're going to be getting right back into the story
Okay, so getting back into the story, Deku would basically be like, nah, 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 I'm just playing, as Uraraka would be like, uh, okay? And this is when Deku would be like, alright, so are you ready for these ma matches? As Uraraka would say, what matches? And right on cue, you can hear Midnight calling everybody for them to have their little battles. As it's at this point that Deku would smile, and the people that ended up, you know, passing would pass, the people that failed would still, of course, fail, and Ojiro would still cop out of his match matches as Deku would get into a fight with none other than Shinso now this is when Deku would be getting hype you know he'd be getting ready he'd be jumping up and down you know stretching you know moving his arms a little bit you know our boy Deku would just be getting into the zone right he would get into the stadium and immediately he'd be like yo what's up as Shinso would look at him and say you're a fussy one aren't you Deku would say yeah as he would put his hand behind his head but immediately as soon as he does that Deku's expression would go blank Deku would just stand there like a mindless drone as Shinso would smile and this is when Midnight would say begin as immediately Shinso would say walk off the walk off the ring. Deku would then start walking off and he would quite literally just completely walk off the map. There's not going to be anything stopping Deku from doing it. I'm not going to lie to you guys. The reason that I'm doing this is because I feel like if Luffy was to get caught up in mind control, this is exactly how it would go. You know, if it was something that meant me death, um, life and death, I feel like Luffy would definitely be able to wake up. But come on now, it's just a little bit of a gag for the video. So, you know, Deku's going to end up losing the sports festival. And after he walks off, everybody's like, oh, come on. They're like, that was the fan favorite. People are pretty disappointed and the rest of the sports festival continues as you guys would expect shinso would move on to round two and when it comes to fighting against todoroki shinso would actually end up losing todoroki's not about to say nothing because he saw the way that deku lost and ojiro even ended up giving him some advice so todoroki's not saying a word he ends up defeating shinso however shinso actually gets looked at by some of the heroes and they actually all end up you know agreeing that shinso's quirk might actually be pretty useful in class 1a as yep shinso he ends up being done way better than he was in the original version of my hero and he actually ends up getting into the hero course after the u.s sports festival which is when we will now be having a brief time skip over to the day where they go back to class now of course many events will still happen like in usual except this time bakugo ends up getting second place because todoroki is not sitting there overthinking about what deku said about his ice instead he decides to just fold bakugo like a like an omelet like i always say and yeah that basically leads to them all going back to class with the addition of one more student, Shinso, whatever his last name is, and everybody would actually be pretty fond of him, especially Deku. He'd be like, whoa, dude, your quirk, pretty amazing, my guy, but trust me, you won't be catching me with it anytime soon. Shinso would smile at Deku's direction, and this is when they would all get seated down as they would be told about their final exams. Aizawa would then begin to explain to Shinso that he doesn't have to take that, however, he will be staying after class two hours extra to work with Aizawa and catch up on all the things that he missed, seeing as he's now going to be having to work twice as hard as all of his other students around him to catch up to the level that they're at. As Shinso would smile, and he would be ready to take on that challenge. Deku would then go home, as for the next following amount of time, they would all be getting ready for their final exams. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, does Luffy look like the type of person who studies? No. No, he's not. So when it comes to the final exam, Deku kind of just guesses on everything. And like per usual, because the man is lucky for no reason, he ends up barely passing. I'm talking like he passed by one point. That's it. Like if it wasn't for that one point, Deku would have gone into the remedial course. And in terms of the forest stuff, he would have ended up failing. However, this is when we will now be getting into the fighting portion where Deku and Bakugo are going to, of course, be forced to work together now immediately bakugo would look at deku as he would say so what's the plan stretchy boy deku would look at bakugo as he would say all right bakugo so what we're gonna do is we're basically going to as he would say psych you really thought there was a plan we're about to fight this man as bakugo would look at him and smile and say well at least we can agree on one thing as it's at this point that both of them would get into their fighting stances this is when bakugo and deku would blitz at all might as he would throw a giant one for all smash at their direction Direction. Deku would say not gonna work I fought against you for a month straight you know how it goes all my would look at Deku as Deku would say should I end this fast 
as it's at this point that Bakugo would throw an explosion, but he would get grabbed by the arm and he would start getting beat in. Like his head would start getting kneed over and over and over by our boy, our legend, our savior, All Might. As Deku would be like, nope not playing these games and immediately Deku would bust out something that he's been working on for quite a while he would use hockey he doesn't even know what hockey is but he would use it a little bit right he would coat his body in armament hockey as Deku would then proceed to pretty much lift his foot all the way up into the sky as Deku's leg is long and enormous and he would then look at All Might as All Might would throw Bakugo out of his area. This is when Deku would slam down his foot and All Might would get completely KO'd as All Might is just down for the count Deku ended up after coating himself with armor mint hockey would be pretty happy about that and all might would just be like bro what did you do when he wakes up but you know Deku would be gone and this is when we will now be cutting over to the forest training arc however before that we will be having the little scene at the mall and in this version with Uraraka runs away Deku doesn't just sit there and watch her leave. See, Deku quite literally follows after her when she runs off. And he's like, wait up, you forgot about me. As Uraraka is just like, oh my god. You know, she's fangirling. She's just like, uh, do I like him? Do I not? She's like, so confused on her feelings for Deku. And Deku, with him following her, she's just like, still doesn't know what to do even more. So with that being said, Deku follows her. And they end up having a little cute moment, I guess you could say. And instead of Shigaraki catching anybody, that never happened. Happens. so oh wait yeah since you know he's gone so it wasn't gonna happen anyways he's already in jail and as we speak all for one after finding out that his successor is pretty much in jail like his plan to make all my angry at the fact that it's nana shimura's grandson is just completely broken like the man is in tartarus and all for one doesn't have nearly enough assets to break him out at this current point that being said, this is when we will now be jumping on over to the forest training. Now, of course, they're still going to go through the little bus ride. They, of course, are going to arrive. The Coda situation is going to go as you guys would expect. You know, nothing really is going to change there up until the point where the Vanguard action squad finally arrives. This is when I will now be introducing the changes to the story. Deku would look as he would see flames burning the forest as they're all pretty much playing hide and seek however Deku no they were all having food right they were all just chilling together having food and Deku would be over there by Koda seeing as you know he wants to help you know he wants to help Koda out with his problems Deku would be talking to him at this point as a huge ominous figure would appear from the corner this being muscular and Deku would immediately get into that into those hands you know he would start getting ready to throw the ones he'd be like bam bam you know he, he'd start throwing the ones with muscular muscular would be like all right all right bro chill 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 and after seeing muscular get buffened up in that way Deku would quite literally do the same he would stretch out his ligaments like rubber and coat himself with armament hockey as he would punch him with a with a hit that was very similar to the one million percent smash that Deku does in the original canon if I uh, offended your ears I do apologize but I do have to continue the story that being said, this is when Deku would rush in through the forest and he and a bunch of other people, including Shinso, would actually be able to take out more people than there was in the original. With Shinso's addition to the team, this means that Shinso was there and he was actually able to stop Dobby whenever it was that uh, Aizawa had a fight against him. Yeah, there was none of that moment. As, uh, Shinso just talked to him and he got brainwashed, turning into sludge. And so afterwards, Shinso actually went over to where the pussycats and, uh, you know, Aizawa were fighting against the little Vanguard action squad members like Spinner and um, what's it called Magma because oh my god I completely forgot about the internships oh people are gonna crucify me down below in the comments this is not okay uh, let's see what to do what to do what to do okay 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 um uh Deku ends up going with Gran Torino he stopped the no moves. Uh, he fought against Stain. Stain was pretty easy, but you know he still had his moment where he used his blood curdle technique to pretty much phase 
caused everybody to stay still, and the video still went viral, leading to the Vanguard Action Squad, Stain, Spinner, all that stuff, okay? I'm very sorry that I didn't cover it in the what if. I really, really, really do apologize, boys. I hope you guys can forgive me, but just know Deku goes to Grand Serena, and that's pretty much how everything kind of plays out. If I would have had the chance to actually cover it, I probably would have made him go with Fatgum, but, um, being a dummy i skipped over the entire thing and i know some of you guys are going to crucify me down below but getting back into the story this is when the big and bad would finally show up and show his face as this would be the moment that all for one would use his teleporting quirk as he would arrive onto the battlefield deku would have just gotten finished taking out moonfish with the help of bakugo and todoroki and at this point all for one would teleport as he would teleport moonfish out of there he would immediately start clapping as he would say so you're the one that cost me shigaraki as he would stick out his tendrils right towards Deku's direction, Deku would use armament hockey to coat his body, and the tendrils would shatter as they would hit Deku's body. This is when Deku would be surrounded with a black aura-ish, and all for one would say, what an interesting quirk. Or, guess it's gonna be the, about that time to take it from you. As he would walk over to Deku, Deku would stretch his arm as he would go over to punch all for one. However, he would use a barrier cork to stop it. And Deku would actually get his hand hand touched by all for one as he would try to rip away the quirk, but he would notice it's not a quirk. And right as he gets that realization, Deku using armament hockey would punch all for one so hard in the face, cracking his mask. Todoroki shot a giant iceberg which caused all for one to get caught in one place and Bakugo used the howitzer impact. As all three of them basically used a one's justice combo wombo to take out all for one. And um, yeah, that's basically how that battle goes. I'm gonna keep it a bug with you guys. All for, um, what's it called? Luffy, Deku with, uh, what's it called? Hockey. He was not about to lose this fight. And I know all of you guys know this. So it's like, let's beat around the bush and just, uh, get it over with. Deku stomped with the help of Todoroki and Bakugo. All for one was taken in prison. And that being said, that pretty much concludes that entire threat. Now, we will be going into the next part. However, if you guys want the finale of this to be recorded the very next day which will probably be about a 10 minute recording then i suggest that you guys of course end up smashing completely abolishing actually you know what nah 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 completely scratch what i just said this is not going to be marking the end i can keep going i know i can and that's what i'm going to do they will after having this little forest training incident event they're basically all going to go back to school seeing as it didn't go out to the media nobody got kidnapped everything kind of went well so they all pretty much end up going back into their schooling system where they have about one month worth of normal schooling until they're pretty much told about their provisional license i hate the provisional license our arc so i will not be covering it not not at all not whatsoever not even a centimeter of this little arc will be covered so we're now just basically going to skip back to when they all in class and they have to meet the infamous big three no wait not not infamous but like famous big three of ua seeing as you know they're not famous for being doing something bad they're famous for being good so you know i kind of use the wrong wording but yada 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 you guys get the point right Deku would pretty much stand there as it's at this point that, you know, of course, Mirio and Deku meeting each other for the first time would be a beautiful thing. See, Mirio and Deku both have some very eccentric personalities, so immediately they would both click, and uh, it's just like... How are you gonna not click with somebody who's almost the same as you? I mean, it's weird because low key, people who are kind of similar don't end up clicking. Most of the time, it's opposites. But for this one time, I'm gonna be saying that Deku and Mirio click, right? Mirio, of course, ends up challenging the class. And when it comes to fighting Deku, that battle is incredible. Deku ends up using another form of hockey, which uh, I'm just adding in for no reason. I bet you guys are like, you never explained how we got hockey. You never did it. Ah, you guys you're probably like raging in the comment section down below talking about some i'm gonna unsubscribe to you you don't understand hockey you wanted hockey i'm giving you hockey be happy if you don't like it deal with it i don't care but uh yeah 
Deku uses observation hockey. I watched like a little four minute video, so I kind of understand how it works. So it's like, yeah, I'm just gonna throw it in here. And uh, Deku would use observation hockey as he would dodge the blow and see that Mirio was about to phase out and phase back in on sight. So Deku proceeds to punch right at that part of Mirio that wasn't phased out. And he pretty much proceeds to KO Mirio without a second thought. That being said, Mirio would pretty much get dropped down to the ground and this is when Deku would essentially proceed to be uh, victorious. He would stand tall before Mirio. Mirio would be like, bro, you're pretty OP. Come to my agency. And Deku would be like, I would be delighted. They would, of course, go to Sir Nida's agency where Sir Nida would be like, bro, you are so weird. But after seeing Deku stretch out in the way that he does, Sir Nida would chuckle a little bit and he would so end up basically giving Deku the stamp. Also, one thing that adds to Sir Nida liking Deku is the simple fact that, well, Deku is not the successor of One for All, so Sir Nida doesn't have this sort of prejudice towards him where he thinks that Mirio should have gotten it. So Sir Nida is way more mellowed out and chill in this version this leads to of course mirio and deku going out on patrol leading to airy running out of the alleyway when airy does this deku immediately upon noticing that a child was getting hurt not like our canon deku where he was terrified of the consequences of what would happen if he was to fight overhaul this version of deku was not going to stand for a kid getting hurt the way that he just saw deku would get enraged as he would immediately look at the alleyway overhaul would begin to take off his gloves however before he even got the chance Deku threw a, a barrage of, of gum gum gatling blows at overhaul it was about 500 mighty blows covered in armament hockey which paralyzed overhaul completely leaving overhaul a shell of his former self and he then proceeded to take Aerie in as she was then treated like an entire queen a princess because you know bro you not about to hurt a kid like that in deku's presence and then like expect to get away with it overhaul is pretty much a, a vegetable and they end up taking the rest of the overhaul stuff down so with that being said afterwards deku ends up being a sort of big brother figure towards airy and this would lead to the ua sports festival where deku you know he does his thing you know he has like the little gentle criminal versus labrava fight and uh that is where what if deku was luffy's reincarnation is going to be wrapped up i hope you guys enjoyed this little fast-paced version of my storytelling that i usually do and if you didn't sorry not sorry i guess i don't know what you want to hear but it's like yeah that being said though guys i do hope you guys enjoyed the video i do hope you guys go on to leave a like as well as leave a comment let me know what series you guys want next but i'm pretty sure that the same day you guys are getting this you are also gonna get what if uh deku was frieza's reincarnation and if you don't get it the day that this drop you're probably going to be getting it the day afterwards but most likely you're getting a double upload the day that you see this video with that being said i love each and every single one of you guys it has been your boy zether and i am out peace